Well, as you can see, we're outside a hotel. We're in Spain, it's 7.45 in the morning. It can mean only one thing. Yes, that's right. We're on another bike launch. This time, it's the BMW K1600. Oh, look at her. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the uh, K1600 GTL. Oh, 1600 cc of Bavarian behemoth. Oh bloody hell! Thought we was going to have him then. Whoa! 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 Now I have to be a little bit careful on this because. It is 340 something kilograms this one. That that's that's a lot of weight. They're telling me it won't, it won't feel like a 300 odd kilogram bike, but I'm going to reserve judgment just yet. I have ridden one of these before, the old version of this, um, but but not a lot. So this is a a bit of a new experience for me, and and I'll be absolutely honest. This isn't, this isn't the type of bike that I would say, yes, I want one of them, I'm having one of them. But I'm going to try my best to go into this experience with an open mind. I wonder if we've got hill, hill stop start technology. No, I don't think we have. Got to do it manually. Try not to stall. Now then, that screen, I believe, goes up. I think there's a button for it, but I don't know what, I don't know which, but oh, I bet it's that one, look. Oh, look at that. As if by magic. Ooh. Right, let's open her up. Bloody Nora. I wonder what happens, I wonder how blowy it is if I put the old screen down. Because some... Oh shit, put the high beam on. Sometimes, sometimes a high screen doesn't help the job, but actually it does help the job. I better myself think with that down. Get the bugger up. That's better. This model that we're riding now is the GTL. The BMW K1600 GTL. This is the slightly tricker version of the GT. And then at the other side of the of the um, K1600 fence, you've got the Bagger and the Grand America. The Bagger is actually the cheapest one um, of the of the four. And the, the Grand America is, a, is like the trick version of the Bagger. So the bagger starts at 20,200 and some quid and the trickiest one, which is either this or the Grand America, I'll have to check, is about 24 grand. So it's a big chunk of uh, big chunk of dough. Big chunk of dough ray me. By hell. Bit of bit of vomp laterals kicking off a beer, I think. <laughs> Grow up, boo they. Oh, sorry, should I have stopped for you? Sorry, love. Whoops. I think we're not far from Frengarola here. A few years ago, I got a hire car nicked in Frengarola. No, it didn't get nicked. We thought it had got nicked. But what happened was, we'd parked it in a, in a horse and cart bay that we thought was a parking spot. So, um, the Grizzlies took it. Or whatever you call the, um... The Spanish blokes that tow your car away when you park it in the wrong bit. The grower. So we had to pay a load of money to them. Get out the compound, they'd scratched it all up, made a right mess of it. No man, it's only a higher car, that's what they're for, isn't it? I've been staring at the back of them two bikes for a little while now and I can't help thinking it looks like um, a Mexican's moustache. The shape that the lights make. Plata o plomo, puta cabrón. I've got to keep reminding myself that this isn't a bike that you want to ride, that you want to go scratching on. It's not. A, it's not a sports bike. It's not a bike that you need to 
throw into the bends as fast as you can and get your knee down and it's just not what it's about it's about taking a step back and enjoying the ride there's no rush just enjoy yourself just chill out just take a chill pill I have got a tendency to um, just jump on a bike and try and ride it as fast as I can which some bikes that's like what they've designed for isn't it sports bikes that type of thing race bikes but this isn't about taking your brain out and going balls out taking your brain out and getting your balls out it's about enjoying the ride enjoying the scenery enjoying the roads taking your missus on the back take her out to buy her a new frock if you can afford one after you've spent all your money on one of these which you probably can the Spanish seaside over there I think that's Fingerola down there Malaga in the distance that is a big fat bunch of big fat Bavarian bikes and we've just done probably um, oh I don't know 30 40k and so far so delicious this is a new um, stereo system on this bike audio 2.1 Deseamos llegar si esta manera no tiene la culpa. Bambola yo, bambola yo, porque mi vida yo la prefiero vivir así. Just had a coffee and I've swapped keys with someone. So just just up to now, I've been riding the K1600 GTL, which is not that one, but one of those. And I've swapped keys for one of these. This is the K1600B. This is the bagger. Um, the main differences being there's five differences uh, between the GT and the bagger. And I'm going to try and remember all five. So the screen's one. Handlebars are another, um, the seat is another, the foot pegs or foot plates are another, and there's another thing, and I can't remember what it is, but it'll come to me, um, and I'll let you know. So yeah, from now off, off, off for the next, for the next little bit, we're gonna, we're gonna be riding a bagger. Get your bagger out. As you would, uh, as you would probably imagine, a bike like this does have keyless ignition so got the key in my pocket press that little button there to turn it on the fuel tank makes some noises great big whopping ten and a quarter inch screen there's a lot there's a lot that there's a lot of different ways you can have that screen there's some buttons down here to that that oh, navigation function not available that do ooh. Oh shit. We'll start oh shit. Start her up. Put her in gear. And rock and roll. This is the bagger and it, it it does certainly feel different straight away. You feel more in command of the bike, whereas on the the GT or the GTL, you feel as though the bike is in command of the road. So it's just I mean it's still they're both big tanks. Um, but it's a different, it's a different type of uh, commanding feeling. This actually feels a little bit lighter, whether it is or not. I think the the GTL feels a little bit top heavy. Um, although it is quite windy on this, so I'm gonna put the uh, put this screen up, the electric screen there. Excellente. Hey, I learnt something new today. Um, we just we just stopped for a coffee, and the um, one of the German guys said uh, it's just starting to rain a little bit. So uh, what, watch out for the tar snakes. So like, oh, tar snakes? What does it mean? But it means these things. Look, watch out for the tar snakes. It's a bit slippery. Sorry about the old German accent there. 
I was talking to one of the one of the German engineers. I, th I think he was project manager of the whole uh, whole K1600 group. So all of the six-cylinder um, BMWs, and he was telling me that all of them, so the, the the GT, the GTL, the Bagger, and the Grand America, are all essentially the same bike in that it's the same frame, same engine, all the same electronics, the subframe's different on these ones, but essentially it is the same bike and it's really just the extremities and the peripherals that are um, that, that, that are different. So it's <clears throat> it's the stuff that you can see. One thing that you do notice on a on a bike that's as heavy as this, the, the back brake does a lot more on this bike than it than it might do on a bike half its weight. I guess it stands to reason you've got a lot more weight on that on the back tyre. You, you, you're getting the, the braking traction, the grip, rather than rather than just locking up and the ABS pumping away. This one being the bagger, and the Grand America is the same. It has the, um, the the big foot plates at the front. If you can see them there, put your foot put your foot up there like you like you're riding a chopper. And that's all good and well, but it doesn't really work on roads like this. It's, it's, it's a comfortable way to ride because it's like, it's like putting your feet up on the coffee table at home, but you can't, you can't get to the, the rear brake and the gear shift. So it doesn't really work on roads like this. Sat on a motorway in top gear, plodding along maybe, but <clears throat> even though this is the, um, the bagger, the, the the cheapest version of the K1600. This one and, and all the bikes on this on this launch has been um, it's been kitted out with quite a few parts. So it's it's got the well you can see the speakers there. It's got the heated seats. It's got all of the extra bits and bobs that um, or a lot of the extra bits and bobs that you would see on the Grand America. So although. Although I think these are £20,215, something like that. Actually, this one's a bit more because it's got all the stuff. And actually, the heated seat's turned on, I think. My heart is getting a bit warm. I feel like I'm on a Panigale V4. I'm not entirely sure why, but I've just realised that I've got pockets full of stuff. I've got... I've got some spare GoPro batteries in my pocket, another GoPro, I've got a bottle of water, a half a bag of crisps, all rattling around in my pockets, making my coat feel all bul bulky. I've got two great big panniers on the back of this, I don't know why I don't, don't just stick them in there. Probably because I'm a bit dim. I mean, a 1.6 litre engine, that, that's a car engine, isn't it? Really? I mean, bloody hell, whose idea was it to put a six cylinder 1.6 litre engine in a bike. It's absolutely insane. I mean, to be fair, there are a lot of things on this on this bike that that wouldn't look out of place in a car. That dashboard, for example, they, they, those mirrors—they're like car mirrors, aren't they? They're not bike mirrors. They've even got that like funny little thing that that, that shows you the extra bit of. What do you call it? Blind spot. So far, I think I prefer the bagger to the to the GT or the GTL. I think because the you, f you feel a bit you feel a bit sort of lo lower and longer on this. It's probably just a, an illusion because I think the riding position is is ergonomically quite similar, but it does feel different. You feel like you're kind of more low ridery, p p p the, prob probably or possibly something to do with the um, them. Fl oh, they fold up. Look, oh, they only fold up. The flappy fold ups, not foldy fold ups. <coughs> flappy fold ups, not foldy fold ups. I've lost my train of thought. I don't think it was a particularly interesting train of thought. I think I was just talking shite as usual. Well, that bread looks nice. Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Well, it's a bit windy, so I don't know if you can hear me, but we've just stopped at Restaurant E Pedro. So yeah, we'll uh, have a bit of have a bit of dinner now and um, do some more miles on the bagger afterwards, and hope that. It doesn't rain, well, it's starting to rain a tiny bit now, but um, keep our fingers crossed. Ciao. 
Now then, if you're gonna spend 20 grand on anything, you'll wanna know exactly what you're getting for your money. So what are you getting for your money with these? Well, first of all, all of the K1600 models come with the same engine, that same engine and the same engine electronics. So it's 1600cc, six cylinder engine. It makes 180 newton meters of torque and 160 brake horsepower. All the bikes come with an absolutely whopping 10 and a quarter inch TFT dash. And they also all come with uh, electronic suspension. That includes the, the less high spec models. So the, the GT and the Bagger. But I suppose the more pertinent question is, why would you buy a bike like this? Well, first of all, I genuinely can't think of a way that they could make any motorcycles more comfortable to ride than these two. And I'm not just talking about now, I'm talking about in the f now and in the future, because it, it really is such, a, such an easy bike to sit on and everything's in the right place and you just you glide along like a cloud. And don't let the 330 odd kilogram weight put you off, because yeah, although it is a heavy bike, when you're booling along, you don't really notice quite how heavy it is. It's only really when you're manoeuvring it round or in a really slow roundabout, it does feel a little bit um, cumbersome. And despite the fact that all of these bikes are over 330 kilograms, they're actually really very bloody fast. Listen, if you're the type of person who's gonna look at a bike that's this shape and this size and say, do you know what? I don't want one of them. I'm never gonna want one of them. That's not for me. Fair enough. I'm not gonna change your mind in a 20 minute YouTube video. But, give it some time, or better still, try and blag a ride on one, because I defy anyone not to be impressed with these bikes. And actually, one day you might decide that, yeah, I do want something that's as fast as these are, and as comfortable. So, when you're deciding how to spend that tax-free cash lump sum you're going to withdraw from your pension, and you thought about maybe buying a boat, or getting a new set of golf clubs, or her indoors wants a new kitchen, nah. Tell us you can make do with the one she's got, because this is a much better way to spend your cash. One of the words that BMW used to describe this bike, the bagger in the um, in the press release about these models was, uh, I think it was dynamic and agile. Now, I'd have to take opposition to that. It's not it's not an agile bike. It's 300 and odd kilograms. It's a it's a big it's a big lump of a thing. Maybe it's more agile than it ought to be for such a heavy bike, but agile isn't a word that I would use. It's planted and it's sure-footed and, you know, it, it's, I think the, the weight makes it almost more comfortable because it just kind of ploughs through and, you know, it doesn't get bounced around by bumps, it just, just ploughs its own furrow, so to speak, but, yeah, agility is not probably, it's not how I would describe this bike. Comfortable, yes. Agile, no. And the great thing about them big foot, peg, foot plates at the front is, like, <coughs> by no means this is, an, is this an uncomfortable bike to ride, but, you know, after a little while with your, with your feet on the pegs, you just fancy a change of position, so you put your feet up like that. It's great. Absolutely phenomenal. Weather looks a bit grim up there, doesn't it? I think we might get um, moistened by the elements. Before it starts absolutely pishing it down and the GoPro microphone stops working, I thought I'd give you a little um, little roundup of what I make of the BMW K1600. It's big, it feels muscular and it's a bit of a it's man's bike. But it's not it's not aggressive in any way, it's 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 totally, totally smooth. It's got a massive engine, but it doesn't it doesn't have scary frightening power in fact it's only got 160 horsepower which isn't a massive amount not when you take into account how much the bike weighs but it's got plenty of torque so it does feel like it can it can get out of its own way it's definitely not slow it's it, it's difficult to fault you know looking at it from a a, a, a big cruiser tourer point of view I, I don't know what else you would want it to do better if i had to choose one i'd probably choose this based mostly probably on looks alone I, i'm saying that i don't like how top heavy the gtl feels with that big top box on the back um again i'm sure you'd get used to that but and i think if you had a if you had a pillion to take um you'd probably you'd probably want to go for that one as well because it's got that big big sort of comfy back seat with the backrest yeah, you've, you've, you've got all the bits that you would expect to have, like like keyless ignition, TFT dash that's, that you can connect your phone to, all the all the rider aids, the 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 shifter and blipper which works really nice. It's got it's got everything everything you'd kind of want in that respect, and it all works really well. The menus on the screen and the dash are 
not not difficult to navigate which is helpful particularly when you particularly when there's a lot of different things you can do and a lot of different options it can sometimes get a bit confusing whereas this is fairly straightforward chilly fm where the listener always comes first that looks like it's going to tip over that thing doesn't it with all them saddle bags on you want one of these mate i mean you can just hear how, how smooth that engine is so it makes um it makes the R1250 RT feel like a bit of a tractor. That six cylinder smooth whistle almost. Wee, a bit slippy. Oh yeah, just, just throw all your gobbo down there mate, don't worry about it. Everybody else does in this town. Don't want to sit 25 grand's worth of BMW on its ass. I mean that's a, that is one thing about riding a bike like this, when it's, when it's damp, you find yourself being very, very, very cautious. Partly because it's a lot of money's worth and, you know, partly because it's a big lump and if you get it wrong, it's you're gonna get it wrong in quite a big way. If you're to lob one off the edge of one of these hills, it'll take some dragging back up. Well, you wouldn't, would you? You wouldn't get it back up. You'd need all the King's horses and all the King's men. All the King's horses and all the King's men haven't got a very good track record, have they? <laughs> they uh, failed the last mission anyway. Maybe you'd be better off having a word with the grand old Duke of York because he had 10,000 men that didn't mind going up and down hills. Well, I say they didn't mind it. Probably got pretty pissed off with it in the end, didn't they? Go on, Fritz, get it chucked in there. That's right, get it lobbed in. I've just discovered something on this bike off camera that you're going to absolutely love. Well, I absolutely love it anyway. <coughs> the horn. Check this out. <laughs> How good's that? That's like a truck horn. We found ourselves on some um, very, very twisty roads and they're actually really, really cool. Um, loads of grape, you can see around a lot of them and there's some real great bends, but you've really got to keep your wits about you, particularly on this bike, because a lot of these corners are they're, um, like a, a, a decreasing radius corner, if you like, like this one, look. It tightens up halfway around and it, they draw you in a little bit because it, it doesn't look very tight and they draw you in and sometimes you end up getting halfway around the corner and deciding that actually you've probably tried to carry a little bit too much speed into it and you're going to run out of road and luckily the few times it's happened to me I've um, been able to pinch a bit of the other side or, or, uh, or just get it turned but on a bike as heavy as this you can only get away with that so many times so you have got to be a bit careful because that's when that weight will bite you on the body. But you ride accordingly, don't you? Oh, that's the idea. I mean, some of these corners have made me wish I brought a set of knee sliders because even on something like this, you could probably, um, if you could feel where the floor was and you know how much ground clearance you had, you could probably uh, really make some shapes on this stuff because there's, there's a lot of grip. In case anyone was wondering how much storage space there is on one of these motorcycles. So we'll open it by pressing that button, lift that up, open her up. You get plenty in there I reckon. A nice high vis vest and safety first. All well, that means. So there's one of them at both sides and then uh, a big old box at the top. Someone's that in there, I don't know who that is. Um, but yeah, plenty of space, I reckon, I reckon you could fit a bit, um, bit of stuff on that back seat as well if you needed to, or a big rucksack anyway, if you uh, were going on a really long trip, if there wasn't enough space in them three boxes and you wasn't taking your missus with you, or your boyfriend, depending on um, what you prefer. So yeah, there you go, the um, luggage capacity in the K1600 GTL. Turn that c**t off. Go oh, fucking hell, Jesus Christ. It's not a bike that, that, that my riding style suits. I want something that's a bit more, um, a, a, a bit more agile and a bit more, bit more sporty. So let's just get that out the way first. That doesn't mean I think it's a bad bike. I actually think it's very, very good. I mean, it's a BMW, so it was always gonna it was always gonna 
do a lot of things very well and it does a lot of it does all the things that I think BMW want it to do the screen's brilliant you loads of space on it there's loads of info on it and it's not too messy there's a bit of space particularly in the in the GTL to put all your pants and socks oh God of Seville hola senor hola que tal senor hola muy bien muy bien Gracias. Tell you what, it's a good job I'm uh, multilingual, isn't it? This bike does everything it says on the tin. And it's reasonably quick and it's very comfortable. It is heavy though, and I think 90% of the time when you're riding it, probably probably more than that, probably 99% of the time, that weight doesn't matter because you're just bombing along in a straight line or you're, you're nice and smooth around the bends and, you know, it, it, it sort of... The, the weight almost, almost helps it because it's very very stable and it kind of it makes the bike feel dead smooth and flowing but if you have occasion to maybe push it a little bit more around any twisty bends then it does start getting a bit whoa 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 it's different you can't hold that against it because it's not supposed to you know it, that's not what it's for people aren't going to buy this bike and go and do that but um you know just so you know if you did if you did decide you wanted to go and do that you might come unstuck and you know just to address the fact that it's 20 odd grand so so are all the other bikes that are that are this you know specced up and and in this kind of uh genre if you like you know goldwing for example well that's 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 thick end of 30 grand for the trick goldwing one thing i will say about this bike is um Although it's not, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it down in the sort of exciting bike category. That engine does sound pretty, pretty naughty when you roll it on. Listen to this. We are once again approaching the hotel after what I think has been quite a successful day. I was expecting a big, wholesome motorbike, and uh, that's exactly what this is. It's delivered on, um, delivered on my expectations and more because I've really enjoyed today. I enjoyed it more than I thought I would, and I hope you've enjoyed it too. Well, looks like that's the end of the line. Peace out, mother truckers.